Welcome back to the Capes and Tights podcast right over here at capesandtights.com. I'm your host, Justin Soderberg. This episode, we welcome Anthony Cleveland to the podcast to discuss his upcoming comic book on December 13th, Charred Remains, with Andrea Muti and Taylor Esposito at Mad Cave Studios. It's excellent. We talked a bunch of different things about this comic book and so on. Anthony's also written books such as Stargazer and Shozen over at Mad Cave. But this is his upcoming one, Child Remains, which is amazing. But before you listen to this issue, this issue, this episode, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Blue Sky, as well as rate, review, subscribe, all those things over at Apple, Spotify, and all your major podcasting platforms. But this is Anthony Cleveland, comic book writer of Child Remains at Mad Cave Studios. Enjoy, everyone. Welcome to the podcast, Anthony. How are you tonight? Good. How about you? I'm doing wonderful. Uh, we, you know, chatting on, on, on a weeknight. Uh, were you? At a, did you have a busy day today, or what was like today like for you? What's a, what's a normal day for Anthony? Yeah, today was day job. Came back from vacation, so that was not as fun as Monday. <laughs> Getting back into the groove of it. Mm -hmm. that's, Just that's four fun. days off, and then yeah, took a while to get back to it today. It's but I had two donuts, so that helped. <laughs> those statements that we always need a vacation from our vacations. It, it's one of the, it's true. It, yeah, it's so true. Yeah. My wife and I now, like we've basically like, we're going away for Thanksgiving and we're like, okay, we're going to go leave Thursday, go away Friday, come home Saturday. So we have Sunday to do nothing. Cause I think I just, like, just that one day of like nothing. It's perfect. It really helps. It really helps. <laughs> yes, it does. I've That's always, bad. and I live in Bangor, Maine, which is, we have an international airport, but it's not easy to fly in and out of. So like you always have to do like 17 layovers and all that stuff. So a lot of times people try to fly to Portland, Maine, which is a couple hours away. Um, but then you have to, when you fly back from your vacation, you have to get in a car and drive two hours home. It's just a pain. It's like, sometimes uh, it's worth the extra money in the layovers to just fly into your backyard than it is to actually fly two hours away. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah but for yeah. sure. It is it's a, it's a different uh, you know vacationing is different for us working folk over here no um but yeah we're not here to talk about your vacation or work or anything like that we're just talking about fun things like comic books and uh mainly charred remains uh which is coming from mad cave studios but before we get into that so you obviously have a day job you're also a comic book comic book writer what is your journey into reading and collecting comics like well how did you get into the the industry of not not writing comics but just like enjoying comics in general it was when I was growing up, like I really liked horror comics because I came from like that 90s era where Tales from the Crypt was big mm -hmm. and it was hard to find horror comics on the shelves back then that were, you know, what I was looking for. So mostly I read um, a lot of movie IPs. I grew up with the Dark Horse books. So it was Aliens, Predator, Terminator, mm -hmm. Starship Troopers, maybe some Star Wars books from them here and there. But that's mostly what I read. And of course, superhero stuff like mm -hmm. that's everywhere. So it's, it's they used to have that on uh, on the spinner racks and video stores, so that was easy to do. But then, um, I, you know, kind of I studied film because I was like, that's mostly what I was interested in, and I guess that's why I read the the IP books. So I studied that, and then didn't really get into it as deep as I wanted to. And then I kind of circled back, I guess, after a while to comic books because it's more, I don't know just visual storytelling i guess it's better mm -hmm. there for me it works better mm -hmm. for me yeah and I, I i grew up not being able to read very well and so comic books in general were like that medium in between like taking in the pictures and the, and the illustrations and, and reading which then now i read you know a book a week which is amazing because that's the difference between you know it, it's some of a segue into things so yeah it's a visual medium is a, is a fun way to get into people who don't really read that much or they read a lot it's one of those different storytelling devices for sure Sure. And like for me too, it was those books were from R rated movies mm -hmm. and I couldn't always, you know, check out R rated movies from video store or the library, but comic books, no one really checked that stuff out, even though that stuff was pretty, pretty bloody, but yes. still. And you can sneak it. Like you could like hide over in the corner and sneak and read a comic book. Right. You can't really sneak watching a horror movie. It's not very easy. To... <laughs> no. Well, nowadays no. I think kids could. They could probably watch it yeah, on their iPad phone. or their phone or their clip. But like, the TVs you have behind you, it's like you'd have to watch it on this tube TV and someone would be like, what are you watching? Is that the exorcist? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a, it's a uh, 
horror comic books are, I mean, that's what you do nowadays, basically, is you're writing. I mean, I would think that, you know, Child Remains is in that horror category. Um, Show's End probably fits in that horror category. You now are a writer of comic books as well. You're, you're you not only enjoy you know reading and, and collecting comic books. You were a writer of comic books. How did that get into starting? Um, from like you know studying film, I wanted to get mm-hmm. into that. It didn't really work out, and I kind of decided to try comic books because I think what I what really appealed to me to that was it's it's two minds. Uh, or one mind, depending on what kind of book it is. I can't draw, so I got to depend on somebody else. <laughs> yes. But that, that, that you know, from mind to pen, visual storytelling is something that yeah, I don't think can be touched with any other medium. And it's kind of like, it's almost magic. Like, you know, it's it's mind to pen. So whatever you see in your head, you can put on the page. And you're only limited by, you know, your uh, uh, ability or your talent. So that I think that's what's really kept me here. Um but no, I, I got into that. I was making, I was doing a lot of odd jobs. So I was able to afford to hire um, an illustrator for an indie book. Um, we put that out. And then shortly after that, I saw the Mad Cave talent search. And I entered that and was able to get into there and do shows end. And from there, I've been with Mad Cave pretty much the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, a few of other publishers, but like nothing is as great as what I've got there with them. I've just heard wonderful things. I mean, I, you know, I, I couldn't say I haven't heard unbelievably going, almost amazing things from Mad Cave, but I haven't heard many negative things. That's that's a positive, in my opinion. Like, it's one of those things that, and I, as a person on the press side of things, I was mentioning before we started recording, too, is that they send these tubes, I want to say once a month, once every other month of their upcoming stuff. And, like, I just got one uh, uh, for Skeeters is a new book coming out over at Mad Cave. Yeah. Like a poster yeah. and a little mosquito like sticker and a bookmark and a lot of times they'll have these advanced reader copies in there as well um which is really cool and it's one of the only publishers that's actually putting money and effort into these things and i wouldn't say i'm a big big presence humongous presence in this in this industry but it's nice to see these people with a smaller presence uh out there getting these things um and then i was getting them before my lcs was even getting them he's now getting them as well so it's pretty cool to have those posters up and things like that um but a lot of times it's like marvel and dc and then like mad case sending these things out like marvel sends out the big 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 posters of spider-man you know number one coming or whatever but then mm-hmm. no one else really does it and seeing mad cave do this is really cool and so having your books there uh and, and, and i you can't see them right here but like in front of me here i've got don't spit the wind spit in the wind and the devil that wears my face posters that came free to me from promotional yeah. things and, and it's pretty cool to have them up on the wall so they do a great job on that side of it so i'm guessing multiple comics in you've enjoyed working with them as well yeah i mean that's been that way since shows and i still have promo stuff from shows and i try to give away um shows but the chart remains was a bit different because it we they thought really outside the box of what they could do with it uh, marketing wise Mm -hmm. and there's still a lot of stuff that hasn't come yet that i'm excited to see um but yeah it's it's really cool to see how much has changed and how much they've grown since shows end and even before that with uh Mm -hmm. Midnight Task Force and uh, Battle Cats, mm-hmm. and I've had uh, you're, you're you're one of many guests that have been on the podcast that have created a comic book at one point at Mad Cave. It seems like they're not only getting you know your talent search kind of people, um, but you're also getting your your heavy hitters coming over to to write or or, or illustrate over there. I mean, you have Andrea Moody's one of my favorite horror uh, writer or uh, uh, artists of all time, and you were lucky enough to work with him on on Charred Remains on this. Was that something they put together? Or did you know Andrea before this? Both. We okay. <laughs> tried to get together um, maybe after Stargazer came out. I think he DM'd me on Twitter and we were trying so damn hard to get together on a book. Like it just so many stumbling blocks for us to get to anywhere. Uh, pitches. We, we hit everybody up on at least four different pitches. We were trying to, you know, line things up together. You know, he, he liked my stuff. I liked his stuff. Um, he liked the ideas that I was trying to get out there. And then we came to Mad Cave and Mad Cave mentioned him, I think. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yes, yes, that would be great. That would be perfect if we can get that lined up. Yeah. And that's how yeah. we got finally, like, you know, I, it's, it's like I said, uh, 2019, 2020, that long we've been trying to get together. Now mm-hmm. it's 23, tail end of 23, and we're finally getting a book out together. Really cool. <laughs> and, and honestly, it could be perfect timing in that sense, because I, I think that, his 
Andrea's artwork works so well with this book. Like there's some people, we read it, my, my LCS, we read A Legacy of Violence for our book club uh, a couple of months ago. And there were some people that were just like kind of turned off by by Andrea's artwork because I hate to say messy, but it's that messy and artistic. It's more free flowing than it is, you know, simple art. And some people were just like, oh, I just did my thing. And I was like, I just fell absolutely in love with it because I felt like, I don't know, there's more interpretation in it and things like that. And and with it being a fire, <laughs> like flames, yeah. it just fits that style because Andrea's art lines are great. But then there's this other watercolor style esque stuff behind it that I just felt like when I read this book, I'm like, this works so well with this fire theme to it. Yeah. I mean, I, I always check out his horror books. I think it yeah. was um, Maniac of New York. It was just, mm -hmm. I read that. I'm, I read that like the highlight for me was just the gore, the slaughter, the, you know, him tearing through the subway. Um, that was great. But I mean, I think that's what I focused on. But now that I'm reading Charred Remains, it's the quieter scenes, the dialogue scenes that he does. And I'm like, the way he catches the emotion at the right time on the panel is it's master, like it's mm -hmm. masterful. It's it's really, really impressive. I love it. I'm blown away every time I get a page from him. Well, you, you you partner that up with the fact that like, you know, we're here talking to, to you, Anthony, but like you also have a letterer and killer SPZ on the like, <laughs> You hit like a home run on this, this, this creative group on this book. Yeah, that that's the first time I worked with a, a, a letter that wasn't Justin Birch, and it yes. was just like Taylor. We got Taylor. I'm like, okay, okay. Like, it, and, it and, felt... and, and Taylor's great, uh, amazing, and it would have been great yeah. to have Justin on this too because Justin's also amazing. But it is one of those things that Taylor's artwork or, or or lettering, I should say, does stand out pretty well in a good way. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, just very surprising to see that. I mean, I'm I'm just you. I'm just used to just. That's why I'm saying like yeah. we talk a lot, and every time, every project, every pitch I try to get to him is him. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, but yeah, just getting somebody else different like that that make it flow that well, seeing mm -hmm. it was just it was really cool, really cool to have it happen finally. Something. And, and as we're we're getting in, we're obviously talking about uh, Charter remains. You jump right into talking to you about it, and that was on me. But can you give a little bit? Of, I hate the word elevator pitch, but a little bit elevator pitch to people who may not know what Charter remains is all about, what the book is about. Yeah, bear with me. I'm I'm terrible <laughs> at it. Um, Charter remains is about. Um, how about it? it begins? It begins with Amy. She's about nine years old. Um, there's a fire in the her apartment complex, and the firefighter there tries to help her. And they both witness, or they both see together, an entity made of fire, smoke, and ash. Um, years pass. Um, Amy's still trying to find out what happened that night. And the firefighter has since um, moved on, denied it, mostly for her sake, to help her move on. And then something happens in the first issue that brings them back into it to finally find out what happened. That was a long elevator pitch. <laughs> no, it's great. It's like I was the certain like things that I've I, I hear every time I listen to my, another podcast where it's like do this, do this. What's this about? And the word elevator pitch always comes, uh, you know, to mind. I could have just read the um, solicitation that's on Previews World for it, but sometimes that also doesn't get enough information out there. So sometimes I like to have, you know, the creator talk about it. But yeah. Very good. I think that's perfect. You nailed it for the first issue. You. Congratulations. You you can you. you can continue writing the book. No. Um <laughs> for real. Is, is this a book that Mad Cave approached you with a, a base on and then you you ran with it over there, or is this something you've been trying to get created for a while? No, this is something they approached okay. me, us with, and they put the teams together on that. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, like they, I think it was I, I've been talking about them getting a horror book like a like straight horror book because i think shows ends kind of fantasy horror almost mm -hmm. superhero sometimes and stargazer is sci-fi thriller some I, I pulled for a lot from you know horror but it's still sci-fi and then mm -hmm. this is the first book that's like firmly this is horror a little bit you know noir i pulled from but like it's the first horror book i think i that's out that that's the, mm -hmm. the first horror book i've done that's out released before any other ones um yeah i think it was pitched to me and i'm like i i <laughs> my when my my last job it was um that was my last part-time job before i got into comic books i was a corner deputy and like there's some cases that really get to me and i just straight up told him like 
burnt bodies. It's nothing. Like I can't, mm-hmm. it bothers me. It freaks me out. And I'm like, let's, let's do it. Let's make a scary book about something that freaks me out. And I think that was a big selling for them. And we've just locked sense with that. Mm-hmm. It's funny how you mentioned that. I obviously did a little bit of research before I did, you know, saw that you had gone from, you know, accounting, a corner, a corner deputy to, to, to writing comics is, um, I was like, what is a county corners deputy's job? Like, what is the actual definition of the job? And so I was like Googling it and there was no, in the, um, you know, like the requirements, like lift 30 pounds, da, da, da. there's nothing about yeah. having like a strong stomach. <laughs> there's nothing like no. you should really be able to deal with this, this, and this. Cause I think it's probably just assumed that you need to be able to deal with this stuff. If you're going to be a corner deputy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You really do. Um, I, I think my pitch for, for when they said like there was an opening, it was just like, so how are you around dead bodies? It's like, I, I don't know. I don't know. But like I went to a scene, uh, like shadowed it. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's very much, it's so close to storytelling. It's, it's you're retracing the steps, collecting evidence to figure out how this person died. Um, so you need to figure out those hours or days that led to their death or even, you know, uh, beyond that being discovered, you know, what happened between A and B and mm-hmm. your job is to collect the piece of the story to put that together. And I was pretty good at it for that reason. Um, the medical stuff, they teach you enough, but it's good to have someone on standby. If you notice something that's out, you know, not, you know, doesn't line yes. up right or something looks yeah. odd. Yeah. It's, it, but it still takes a special person, I think, in, in general. There's certain jobs take special people in general to be able to do that. I don't think I'd be able to be around dead bodies. I think you passed the, the interview when they said you don't know, which means, okay, this person hasn't murdered anybody before, so we know that much. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm actually like... really around dead bodies. Wait, your resume doesn't say anything about how do you <laughs> – how do you – what? <laughs> right. I, was, yeah, I, mean, I think I was trying to figure out the last funeral I've been to, and even then I couldn't do it. How about, how about Fine, a, then, I guess. a new comic now that's a uh, you know corner by day comic book writer by night uses that to help write his comics you know there like, we there go. You go. The, the, every story is based on a, on a real true story and you could be murderer in the background too you can also murder people and no one will ever know yep no one <laughs> ever know just write it off Accident. Yeah, exactly. Totally. exactly I mean so you mentioned this is a horror comic book in, in the sense that it's that noir horror, but I guess every horror book has a subgenre really to it. It's not just specifically horror. Um, sure. and, and I was looking for that. I was looking for some new new books, like actual pro like novels to read. And, and I was thinking like, I would consider this horror, but some people put it in the thriller and mystery suspense category and so on and so forth. What makes, other than the fact that you said like a, it's more of a horror book, it, Tard remains different to those who people who read Anthony's work, your work in the past, Stargazer, uh, um, shows in what makes this one stand out differently or is there are there tones that would go between all three of them for sure there are there's i think all three of them do have that big mystery i think with shows in, it's you know what's lorelei's story with stargazer it's what's going on in this book pretty much uh what happened that night and then this one is also what's going on who's behind the fireman what is it can it be stopped that kind of thing so i think that's always going to be there for me i think that's i think it's something that you know gets me excited when i write is um that mystery for the readers to kind of pull apart um for this one being different i it's um probably the most grounded one Mm -hmm. i think one of the things that pulled me to it was like a kind of thought of it as like a Gotham City audition tape or something like that. So I, I approached it like all the, you know, Batman detective books I like. And uh, I think that's something I hope people catch from it, I guess. Um, I, I think that's a big thing that's different from it. I like the grounded part of it too, because I, I you know, people who listen to this podcast religiously will know that I've said this way too many times, but it's that's my favorite type of horror is the horror is in the sense that it's, like while you're reading it, like this could be based on a true story and then slightly veers into the unbelievable. And I think that's where like a true horror in my mind is, is because I'm reading this going, oh my gosh, if my house caught on fire, X, Y, and Z. There's some things like we talked during our horror week we did here over at Capes and Tights. It's, is that uh, like Michael Myers, for example, 
was was believable for the first movie you know jason maybe the first three movies his mom him so on and so forth but when they start electrocuting jason with lightning bolts and he comes to resurrect it and comes alive okay now you're veering too much into the supernatural part of it and the grounded part of it it's like this basically the first issue is just about some houses that caught on fire and some things that went on with it there isn't this like super unbelievable narrative in it that makes me go okay this is definitely a comic book because it's fake like this could be based off of someone's actual true story selling storytelling like you could actually read this and go well i'd have to this person probably believes that this is actually what happened and that's what i think is more the more scary part of these books is that the fact that i could read this and be like this could be based on a true story paranormal activity you know like mm-hmm. the first paranormal activity movie was like all the way up until like the last 10 minutes of the movie i'm like this literally could be someone's security footage <laughs> like i literally could like, we could believe this and that's what makes it so scary i do feel like this falls into that category of believable to a point you know what i mean yeah we don't get that far out here out there with this one besides you know having the fireman kind of up here he's in like the first three pages mm-hmm. so there's something there we don't know what or what it could be but there's something there that we do show um, but yeah, we don't get that far out there in this book. Maybe in the last issue we do. Last issue is fun. That's if there's one issue I'm looking forward to seeing drawn, it's definitely mm-hmm. that one. There's some cool stuff in that one. Some hype. Some hype. Is this a five issue miniseries? Is that what the plan is or six, yeah. Six, yeah. nice. I like is that I mean that's something that I've seen more recently over at Mad Cave too. I think the six issues is what they started to do too, because I think Monomyth was six issues. Uh Legacy of Violence is twelve, but that's basically in my opinion, like two six issue series if you think about it. Um mm-hmm. but yeah, I like that. Six issues. I think that's perfect, honestly. That like working with Mad Cave is awesome. They you know, when I first started with Shows End, it was pretty um uh bordered it was you know five issues 20 pages Mm -hmm. and i struggled with that because i came from indie comics and that was you want to do more pages pay for them (laughs) yeah exactly do more pages pay for them um so that was kind of something i had to get used to but then i think after there was more wiggle room and stargazer Mm -hmm. and then with charred remains it was like take as much space as you want just let us know um, ahead of time and that was really cool creative feeling to have um, and I think like, I try to balance it out like okay if I go 24 pages here I'll go 20 pages here I'll trim mm-hmm. something off here but let's leave it longer here and they wanted to they're happy to work with that and it was just cool to see how much stuff that got approved and we were able to tell the book as best as we could we see all you creators out there growing uh you know if you read your first story that you wrote in the comic book industry compared to what tried remain remains people are going to see it's obviously you've grown as a writer it's nice to see that publishers like mad cave for an example are also doing that in the sense that like you mentioned at the very beginning maybe they had a little bit more boundaries and you know the bumpers on the lanes whereas mm-hmm. now they're a little bit more like no we gotta let these creators that we brought on that we chose to bring here do a little bit of their own thing and see what happens. And I feel like it's worked. I feel like a lot of those comics are getting better and better and better at this place. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, with they, they always kind of have been that way. So when they share one of their IPs with us, it's, you know, here's our idea, do whatever you want with it. But of course, you know, it's gotta be still approved uh, with an outline or whatever. I think Stargazer was one that was just, it not similar at all to what was pitched to me. We came away with something completely different and that was still approved. But I mean, that went, that went through some back and forths. Okay. Um, I think mine was the original was a little bit more darker and it's, it's a way better comic now for that back and forth that we had. Mm-hmm. Um, Charred remains is the first one. I'm like, no, let's not touch it. I think this is pretty good as is. I think the only thing I changed was I think the uncle and from the first issue worked in a library and I changed it to a resale shop. I really think that's the only change that I made um, from their uh, initial pitch. They're like it was, it's only like a, a paragraph pitch, if that, mm. maybe three sentences. They're like, no, but Anthony, yeah, that, you're fired. It. Nope, we had they have to work at a library. I don't know why you changed this. <laughs> I, I think the only reason why I changed that is because, like in horror stories, there's always like they're looking through the microfilm in a library trying to figure out what happens. And I think that's the reason why they had that in there. So it was, she could have the access to the, the mm-hmm. records in the library to figure out what happened there. And I'm like, yeah, 
let's 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 try not to do that. Really, like I, I get it too because it's a library; it's all paper. So that yeah. would be really cool to you know set on fire and uh, whatever. But we did, didn't did you have to do research, research on fires? Like, are you did you like were you like sitting there like doing some googling on like how fires work and start and and, and you know firefighters or stuff like that? Or did you have to do all that for this? I've only read obviously for the first issue, so I don't know where this actually goes. Um, but was there some research that needed to be done? Yeah, there was research, but it was mostly on just New Orleans, okay. uh, New Orleans infrastructure, New Orleans history. We get into a lot about how their flooding system works, um, their underground canal system, um, water treatment facilities, things like that. That was the big thing. Like, I don't think I, I was surprised how much how deep we got into just city infrastructure. But yeah, it's, it really sucked me in how they manage that city it's nuts i feel like some people write books in their own backyard because they don't have to do that research <laughs> like i'm going to write a book about maine because i don't know how to do that research i know how maine works I w- it's hard for me to write a book about new orleans i've never been I, it's hard for me i to try to i tr- yeah, try to <laughs> that, that was that was a part of the uh initial pitch was it's new orleans yeah um so we stayed there but yeah if i if i'm doing it i'm gonna write yeah about a cornfield or something that's next yes. to me <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's that's which is you know it's it's very common that's why stephen king's books are all based loosely in you know the pseudo main area um and it's because like I said, it's really easy to be able to write your own what you, what you know instead of writing something yeah. that you have to do research on uh it takes more more out there on it um just, oh, hold on one second i gotta <laughs> what i just got an email sorry i got an email the email is charred remains from mad Cave studios while we were recording this episode, I got an email saying that. <laughs> and they're, they sent me a drive link of it to read it. Interesting. The world thinks they know we're listening to this. We're talking about Tried Remains. Um, but speaking of uh, Tried Remains and getting emails and things like that, my buddy Jesse Lundberg did a variant cover of Tried Remains for a, uh, a comic book place in, um, it's called Santana Collectibles um they did a did a variant for it he did a variant for it that they're doing a portion of the sales are actually being donated to the national fallen firefighters foundation uh, which i thought was pretty cool like you know a tie into to this book uh as well as i i want to say i've met jesse a number of times at comic conventions i want to say jesse is a former firefighter so like oh i didn't know that being, being an artist too on the book and being a firefighter is pretty badass. And I have it. I don't know if you've seen all the variant covers for it at all. Um, but if you haven't, I will actually forward this email over to you. But uh, uh, it's a pretty cool cover uh, with a face coming out of the smoke and the flames. Yeah, in the that one's really cool. But uh, but yeah, that's cool. I was just he he was at a local convention we had here in Maine recently, and he had those covers. Uh, you know, had a picture of the cover displayed for me to see, and he was nice. like, "This is coming out." And then he emailed or said something later about the foundation fundraiser and then i was like i couldn't find anywhere we were trying to get the audio to work on this on the podcast i was like looking for it and so i just finally was like i'm just gonna email him and ask him so he responded back with that uh statement it's for the fallen firefighters association uh which is pretty pretty badass that you can actually have something that's tied in like that too obviously i'm guessing you had nothing to do with that right (laughs) no offense Um, to you (laughs) it it was discussed it uh, it was brought up and we, we talked about it um we were looking for the right um i guess charity to go for it with it mm-hmm. and there was a few that were brought up and i guess that's the one that they went with um but yeah that was really cool to see it like because there's a few ideas that we hit up in the marketing and what we could do um i don't know turn the book into something more than just this do something extra and that was just yeah really cool to see mm-hmm. I, I, I don't remember him talking about this when I saw him for the first time. Like I said, I saw him post something on the internet and that's where I saw this. And that's, that's pretty cool. And I said that the fact that he's actually a firefighter uh, was actually really cool too, to see someone who worked in the book. That's actually a firefighter. But the big thing to me is your variant, your main covers are done by Mon house, which is also pretty crazy. How does that something they yeah. put together? I'm guessing. <laughs> that was a big surprise to me. That was another <laughs> one like maniac, New York. I, I yeah. got that one for the R2. And then, um oh man i can't remember the aftershock book that he was on it was um just like demons and soldiers oh, i can't remember the name of it that was just what i i bought well, i hate to say i bought for the art like it was just man art and mm-hmm. it was just like 
that was, I don't know, four years ago, three years ago. And it was just from then I was hooked on his art. And I was like, one of those, like, there's like a, a bucket list of artists, horror artists I would love to work with. And like, I'm halfway through it already. <laughs> exactly. Was it God I, Killers? You know, yes. 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 I, yes, yes yeah. That's it. God Killers. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh man, but yeah, there's just a, seen his so, covers. Sometimes you like hit gold, and it's like okay, great publisher working with, and you got Andrea on it, you got Taylor on it, and then now you have you're like oh, house, house is doing our covers too. Oh my god, and uh, Andrea has a variant cover for number one. I don't know what your variant cover if it's gonna be A's and B's and C's and all that for the rest of them. I know previous world only has the A for um, issue two solicited right now but i'm just getting it's also mm. probably cut with the first issue hasn't even come out yet so i'm guessing there might be some catching up to be to be done yeah I, there might be a few other covers um i'm not sure but yeah it's, it's a and b mm -hmm. um i think he i think there's yeah the lantern one that mm -hmm. andrea did and then the fire uh chest one the mm -hmm. rib cage i think that's the two we have and then the, the charity cover that's awesome um, I was trying to find if Mad because and a lot of times Mad Cape also has um their own exclusive on their website too. I know they had like the one in one hundred or the hundred they printed up or whatever it is that they put on their I website. I feel like there too. might be one more, but I'm mm -hmm. not I'm not certain. Um it's it's uh it's funny too. So I, we like doing these obviously pre the issue coming out so we can solicit help solicit the issue. We're big fans of it. So like it also helps us like you know tell people about it before it actually comes out obviously we're now in that window that i don't know when foc is for this thing or if it's already passed since we're recording this no it, it's the 20th i think of this okay. month and then um which would be great because i think this drops the 15th so we have you'll have okay. a couple of days to fo get this get to your, your local comic book shop however sometimes like all the information is not out and the covers aren't all really you've revealed or something like that so sometimes you're like waiting for things to be seen um but yeah it, it's uh it's really cool we can do this before because like i said i would i can't speak highly enough about it i tend to only talk to people on the podcast with things that i enjoy i'm not you know cnn or any of these big news agencies who have to like just talk to people about the news so like you could be you know bored or against it and still have to talk about it for me personally i'd be like if i read it I would have emailed Melissa and been like, I'm all set. I don't need to talk to Anthony <laughs> if I didn't like it. Luckily enough, I was able to like it. And I was able to interview um, Andrea for our horror week, just talking about horror art, horror comic books. Uh, and so uh, in a written interview. And so both you two got that box checked out because I was actually a big fan of Charity Remains. So people should definitely read it and tell your comic book shop to buy it, to get it. Awesome. Yeah. Thank so you so much. Yeah. I think, I think people need to get it because it's absolutely wonderful. Um, that you mentioned that image of um the firefighter and you know i'm not going to explain that because it's actually what third page in um but it's honestly my favorite imagery and they told it the entire first issue so i will say that much yeah those first few pages were fun to write i, I wanted to make it even shorter but they made me stretch it out a bit more um but yeah i, I think that's a good hook for a horror mm -hmm. story mm -hmm. yeah and, and and also like this to me is if you're a fan of and the other Mad Cave Studios recent series, Legacy of Violence, with Andrea's artwork, then you're definitely going to be a fan, at least of the artwork on this book, because you could put them together because of the artwork is very similar all across on those. Obviously, they're different stories. However, they are both pretty grounded, in my opinion. I don't know if you've read a Legacy of Violence yet, but... Just the first it, one. Yeah, the first it, issue. It's, it's... That's where I... I luckily, where they put my pull quote on the back of the second volume um, uh, trade... And it was about being grounded and then veering into the unbelievable. And that also has that tie to this too. So like Andrea's got that in, in their pocket with, you know, drawing some realistic looking in a sense, uh, horror comic books, but uh, you're also nailing it. I mean, I'm show Zen was amazing. Stargazer is amazing. Uh, and then Charter Char remains is, is absolutely wonderful as well. So you're, you're, you're kicking butt in, in, in the uh, comic book industry, uh, you know, so all, all hats off to you. Anthony, right. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> absolutely. Um, outside of uh, this, obviously you're promoting this, you're heavily into this right now. It comes out December 13th at your local comic book shop. Uh, and then obviously issue two will follow that as well. And like we mentioned FOC, uh, make sure you just tuck, even if you don't get a chance to listen to this until after, till, still tell them you want it because you know if it doesn't immediately sell out, they can just place a reorder and get it in. So 
we'd like to get this to a point where Mad Cave is like, we should do a second printing. Um, yeah, always. So yeah. Definitely tell your LCS if you do want it. Uh, uh, um, and if you miss out on it always altogether, like maybe you have missed out on Stargazer or Shows End, they're available in trade paperback. So you can get those at your local comic book store or any bookstore, which is badass too. That's what's cool about trades is you can get them anywhere. <laughs> yeah. You can get them at like Borders. You can get them at like Amazon. You can get them anywhere, which is pretty cool. Um, are you working on other stuff too? I'm guessing there's some things you can't talk about or 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 or, or still are in the you know hopper, but I'm guessing you're still working on writing other stories as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm mostly pitching right now. Um, I so I think Charred Remains was kind of last year, late last year, writing that. So this year's book that I written is done and will be out uh, next year, and that's my first creator own book. So we're excited about that. Um, also horror. Also with another dream artist, <laughs> another horror dream artist. So. <laughs> there you go. Like you know, um, you, are you obviously you have other work to do and stuff like that. Is it does it take up a lot of your time to do comic books on top of having something else to do? Um, not too much. I think okay. what I spend a lot of time on is outlining, plotting. Scripting is not so bad. Scripting is like. I, I just write dialogue first. So mm -hmm. dialogue, then I'll break it up in panels as I do the dialogue. Dialogue is kind of um, uh, was a stream of conscious for me. Um, mm -hmm. So then I just, you know, focus up and clean it. So that I can knock out an issue in, I don't know, a few hours maybe. But then cleaning it up, coming back, that'll take me a week or two to get done. Um, so no, it doesn't take me too long, but just the plotting and figuring things just, out. Yeah. And, yeah. Even even after like you think you have a rock solid outline, like I think Tribe Remains was one of those where it's like I, I got it. I I figured I you know it was completely done, rock solid outline, and because it's noir mystery, you notice things that could be for the better. It, you go back and try to fix, or you find things that are wrong. I think that happened twice, and that was not fun to do. But I think it was it, what, what was nice about it was. Um, Andre was doing Legacy of Violence at the time. Yeah. So he, that was a big book for him um, to get through. And so there was plenty of time for us to double back, um, clean up the writing. And we're still like, you know, we're still cleaning up the writing with the dialogue or whatever it might be. Um, so that's, that was a cool experience because normally it's, I'm, they're, they're not, they're too close to where I am writing to where they're drawing. And there's not a lot of time. Stargazer was like that. I couldn't go back and, fix things I would have liked to fix now but this one was like plenty of time so that was mm -hmm. cool to do do you I mean obviously you work together it's one of the cool things if anybody doesn't know the comic book industry the cool things about the comic book industry is working in tandem with another person or other people obviously you have editors over at Mad Cave but you have Andrea and you are working together on this book it's not just one or the other did you have you know notes for for Andrea in there or did you just let Andrea say hey this is the script this is what we're doing run with it and, and you know was there a good team effort on that or was it just basically like I'm gonna do my thing you do your, my, your thing and we'll just go with it yeah I um I think bef this was like 2019 2020 um I think back then he was just doing uh n not full scripts but like you know the Marvel style and I think he did a book with Colin Bunn before Legacy of Violence. And that was full script. And then after that, he said full script was fine. Um, so that's what we went to. And like, okay. I told him I could do anything. He, whatever you want to do, I will do. Like, it, you know, it doesn't matter to me. Like, I, I would like to do Marvel style sometimes because I'd never done that before. Um, but no, we did full script. And I told him, like, you can change you know, anything you like, like, I don't care if it's tell the story, however you think would be best. Um, and I'll, I'll come back and I'll fix it. Um, but no, this, he's pretty much stick to this script for the most part. Nothing's really changed too much. Um, that's, that's awesome. You also yeah. get that in a talented creator who's done a lot of stuff. So it's not like, you know, if you're both, you know, fresh, it might be one of those things that either one of them are trying to put your mark on it. But like, your book, if 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 Andrea does an amazing job with the art, as they have, you do a great job with the writing, as you have, the book's going to sell and do well. So you guys scratching each other's back is actually a good thing than one trying to be more controlling over the other. 
in my opinion. Yeah. When someone works together as a team, it shows. And I think that's what this, you know, in the end, he let you do your thing, you let him do his thing, and then you got a, got a near perfect book out of it. So, yeah, I try to do that with every book mm -hmm. is just be out of their way, let them tell the story any way that they think is best. Um, the only time I step in is if I catch a continuity error or a storytelling problem that will be down the road, then like, I'm going to speak up because I got to, you know, I got to make sure the story's right for future issues and everything kind of lines up. Or if there's like, you know, uh, you know, a story seed that's not being displayed right, I got to mm -hmm. speak up about that. But above that, no, like whatever's best to tell the story, I mm -hmm. think. I think they I would think know better. Uh, they would know yeah, better. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like I said, it, you you're you're also editing your own book as well as, as having an editor as well so you're editing meaning that you want to make sure this book is as perfect as possible and, and that person your whoever your artist may, might notice also saying you said this in this page but actually it's like they may catch that as well so i'm hoping that both places would both sides of this would, would speak up when they need to and the same thing mm -hmm. with a letter when you're going to a letter like the sentence doesn't make any sense we can we can we fix this and you're yeah, like yeah, yeah of course sure. let's make this let's just make this happen uh and that's why that's great about this collaborative effort i've talked to, to to authors that write their own books and then they have an editor and it's like that's that's just me and so i don't have that thing to bounce ideas off of or, or or have someone else to look at outside of me or my editor and that's pretty cool having that artist and a letterer to work with you know and, and andrea does their own colors too so it's not like you have a colorist to also work off of but there's a benefit of uh of having uh, andrea do it all because there's a complete package right there as well so um but i think you nailed this a hundred percent on this book uh the cover itself like i mentioned uh Monhouse's cover this is absolutely stunning um cover two is also beautiful um so just check that out uh, and then cover b for um with um uh, Andrea's artwork on it is also stunning as well. Um, so I think that everybody should grab it. It's FOC's closes on the 20th and tell your LCS that you want it. Grab Stargazer and show Zen on trade paperback, right? Yeah. Definitely. Well, volume one and two. Show Zen. Yes, exactly. Get right. Get both of them. Read them. Read them while you're waiting. If you can get them now, then you have you have until December 13th to read this book. And he paused to read this book and then pick back up where you were left off on the night books. Just read Anthony Cleveland stuff. Don't, don't, you know. Also, I want to mention this when I just said your name. Don't just Google Anthony Cleveland either, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I know it. Yep. <laughs> now everybody's going to. I hate that. If you Anthony Cleveland comics, you get all your stuff. Just Anthony yeah. Cleveland, you get jumpsuits and, and orange jumpsuits. I was like, oh, this is not good. <laughs> I got yeah. Chance. Lots of serial killers. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. I was like, oh, this is interesting. It's, it's, yeah, it just happens. That's the Google machine for you. I'm sure once you created hundreds and hundreds of comic books, you're going to overtake that person, those people. I'm trying to pull the algorithm back. I'm trying to. <laughs> now, but the problem is, is you're going to write a, a book about a serial killer and it's just going to screw the whole system up because they're going to be like, wait, this maybe is the same person. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> but no, yeah. um, yeah, come so, back to that one. Come back to come back to that one next year. <laughs> I'm so glad you were able to take time out. And I, we were supposed to do this last week. I had to reschedule. Thank you for rescheduling and taking time out of, of your day to talk. Charred remains over at Mad Cave Studios hits shelves December 13th. FOC to, uh, is coming right up. So check tell your LCS. Um, and then Anthony, you're on social media and all that stuff too. So make sure people go out there and find find you on social media. Are you? What's your hand? You're on Twitter, I'm guessing, and Instagram, all that stuff too. Yeah. Um, just uh at ant underscore cleveland uh instagram and twitter i don't do much on the other ones that's fine that's you know i'm there let's be honest you're probably going to shift over to just instagram or something at some point because this twitter thing is is a yeah is a probably is a dumpster fire <laughs> they get a fire yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no I, I again i really appreciate it and, and like i said you're, you're you're kicking butt and I, I was so pumped uh when i saw this come through there's a couple times melissa over at don't hide who would send me an email with this PR, you know, press release of something. There's been two times in the past, I don't know, year and a half where I was like, Oh my God, I need to read this book right away. And this is one of them. So, um, that was, nice. you know, this is definitely up there. The other one was, uh, the devil that wears my face, which is, you know, David Peppos and Alex Cormack who nailed that book as well. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so, uh, and yeah, thank you so much for taking time out to chat with us and we'll get you back on again when you have some more comics to talk about. How about that? Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to do it. Awesome. Thanks, man.